Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep Milwaukee Bucks podcast, proudly a part of the Eurostep Podcast Network and the Blue Wire Podcast Network. I am Ty Windish, one of your hosts, and I'm joined as always by the probably combative today, Rohan Kadi. Rohan, how's it going? I'm doing well. Uh, that adjective is uh, got me a little got, got me a little nervous for what we're about to oh get boy. into. Uh, well, I mean, if you're saying I'm going to be combative, that means I'm worried about what you're going to bring to the table, Ty. Um, well, let's, let's just get right into it. We no, are before that. Oh, before never that mind. Time, we have to make sure. See what, I'm, see what I mean? See what I mean by combative? See. <laughs> make sure you're subscribed wherever you're listening. Podcast platform mm. of choice: YouTube. Check out gspn.info for all of our links. Ty, continue with what you were about to say. We are, now that the NBA draft is over, Marjan Beauchamp is a buck. We're excited about it. We'll get into probably what that means for this podcast. But we are ranking our top free agent options for the Bucks. So Milwaukee, not a lot of money to spend, but they have that in common with almost every NBA team. So there could still be some really strong, really important signings out there for the Bucks. They have the taxpayer mid-level exception, at least some of it. Uh, they also have almost a separate category. They can pay Bobby a lot more uh, because he's a retaining free agent. We're not going to cover Javon Carter or Wes Matthews, although I think we both agree. Love to see both of those guys back on a vet minimum next year if possible. For sure. Agreed. Both of them. But we, we wanted to include Bobby in this exercise because he is the biggest free agent remaining. Who would have thought that we'd be here? I still can't believe that Pat opted. <laughs> uh, make sure you check out uh, the pod you and Adam did, yeah. uh, the emergency pod after he opted in. That I don't think that's fully sunk in for me <laughs> that he opted into his contract because that's it's just wild, just wild. Never thought we'd be here. Pat wants to be a lifer buck, really. But he did a podcast today. It was like the Cut podcast. Him and Peter Fagan went on the podcast together. Just a couple of business bros, you know, podcasting, whatever. Uh, whatever they want to do, Pat and or Peter Fagan, if you guys want to hop on our podcast, you know, DMs are open. But so I think before we get into our actual lists, I do want to say, and I, I shared this on Twitter as well, the Bucks draft did change how my list looks. And I think, you know, are they for sure set on wings? No, it kind of depends on what happens with Bobby Portis. I will say if the, if they do re-sign Bobby, I do think that the only glaring need I see is a, another ball handler, your number one need from our needs podcast earlier this summer. And then it's like, you know, find a serviceable big. I no longer think the big man of the future is walking through that door this offseason. There is one free agent who I'm like, maybe, but it's just as, as we've seen with Bobby and, and even with Brooke, it is hard to bring a guy in on such a small contract and then keep him. It, it's really, it requires a lot of faith. And I think, trust and wanting to be here on the player part, which is certainly not impossible, uh, but not easy. But what, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's, I think it's fair to say that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they're stacked at wing that, uh, whether I agree with whether they can add more or not, we'll get into that. Yeah. But, and also we I should do, note before you say also pending Wes Matthews coming back, that yes. has a lot to do with this as well. Yes, for sure. We're both sort of in the camp that he's, Probably likely coming hopefully. back. I'm just going to say hopefully. hopefully. I'm not going to jinx hopefully. it. Yeah. We want you back, Wes, please. Yes. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see yeah. with that. Uh, but yeah, we both have a top 10 list of free agents. I ranked mine based on like feasibility and mm -hmm. sort of uh, like talent, I guess. Yeah. Like the sort the of ones an amalgamation want. of like roster construction uh, price, potential price, and like feasibility. That's how it's ranked for me. Yeah, I, I did the same. You know, I, I think I kind of discounted players who it doesn't seem like will sign. Uh, and certainly kind of, yeah, it was kind of weird to do both, right? Because we've gotten some reporting on some players already that they're looking to sign either with their, their existing team or they're already expected to sign with a different team, uh, which is certainly interesting. But um, I, I think I, I also kind of weighted it the same. So, I mean, I think there's probably no drama here. Uh, you bullied me into this before we started recording. I think our co number one, probably the only spot we both have the same on the list is Bobby Portis, who uh, you just look around the league at players who will actually be available 
and nobody on the list is as talented with as much upside as Bobby Portis is. Plus, as we mentioned, he's already been a Buck. He won a title with the Bucks. They can pay him more uh, than they can pay any of these other guys. Like I think for a lot of reasons, Bobby is the obvious choice at number one. Yeah, for sure. Just in terms of like roster stability, in terms of position, like we've seen him succeed with the Bucks. Again, we are less than a year removed from the Bucks winning a title. Uh, so just keeping keeping the band back together, like as much as you can. That's that's why Bobby has to be number one. Plus, in terms of like you said, talent and sort of like this free agent market, you're not going to be able to take the money in which uh, you would pay Bobby and theoretically pay someone else. No, that's not how that works. They can only do that because the Bucks have his bird rights or his early bird rights, excuse me. So that's why they can pay him much more than they would be able to pay anyone else. So just wanted to clarify that too. Yeah, it's a good note. If, if you don't sign Bobby, you don't gain anything for any of these other players except for our least favorite player, luxury tax savings. And I think as, as Bobby himself noted after the playoffs, despite not having the best offensive series against the Celtics, his defense did look better this season. And I, I think you would hope that that continues to some extent, you know, in between his shooting basketballs to a triangular rim with nails and lasers or whatever the hell else, else lethal shooter <laughs> Did is you doing. Did you see that lethal shooter has people shooting with bowling balls? I have not seen the bowling balls yet. I've seen underwater and I just can't imagine that's helpful. I, I'm, I don't, shouldn't question him. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. What, what are you going to gain? Under, the physics are entirely different. I saw I saw one thing he did is he made the rim just the size of a ball. Yeah. Which that that I understand a little bit because you're just like getting the precision down. But a bowling ball, you're going to break someone's <laughs> wrist, man. Like so you're just you're just asking for trouble. I can't wait as his budget goes up as presume. Hopefully, I, I guess he makes more money as he becomes more famous, works with more NBA players. He's going to be like taking guys to low earth orbit. So they can shoot in different levels of gravity in a wind tunnel. Probably. And then he's going to take him to space. He's basically just becoming dude perfect at this point. Like there's there's only a couple degrees of separation. But anyway, I can't wait. I can't wait for the the uh, the uh, elasticity of the mind to really like give it back. So you shoot with a bowling ball once, and then he gives you a normal <laughs> basketball, and then it just goes flying <laughs> because you're used to putting so much weight. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! But continue. No, I just think um, Bobby Portis, though, a strong two-way player, a great fit. Everyone loves him. Should be a buck next season. Bobby. 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 Okay. Well, let's get to the fun part. How do you want to – do you want to alternate, like, each sharing our next one and then keep going that way? Sure. We can do that. Who's your number two? Gary Harris. Okay. He is on my list. Tell me about Gary Harris. Gary Harris, to me, is a player who, kind of an odd career arc, really seemed like, I think people forget this, not next up, but like, for a while there in Denver, like right around when he got the contract he just finished, it was like, oh man, Gary Harris, this is like an up and coming 3 and D role player, right? Like kind of, I guess, maybe a comp would be like Blazers Wes Matthews, right? Like that kind of player of like, oh yeah, every team would want this guy you, every good team has a couple of these guys, and if you can get him as a starter, that's great. And really, you know, injuries and just the shot fell apart late in Denver, and then he gets basically sent as floatsum to Orlando in the Aaron Gordon deal. Early on, still doesn't look great, but last season kind of rediscovered the shot, and I mean, it, it's hard to know how much to trust it. Again, if it was the Gary Harris that we initially saw back when he was up on, on the rise – he wouldn't be available for the non-taxpayer or the taxpayer, excuse me, mid-level exception. This is, you know, we're dealing with a, a lower pedigree list of players here. But I got, I think you kind of have to, or at least I had to rate Gary Harris a little higher because there's a chance he contends to start this season. And, you know, you could argue Bobby started a lot last season. He's number one. I don't know if there's anyone else on this list who I look at and I'm like, yeah, I, I could see them starting for the Bucks. I think pretty much everybody else for me is like, he could be a pretty important seventh man, which is fine. But I think solving that that gap potential gap at the two where if Wes comes back, you know, we both agreed. I think we all agreed after the playoffs ended. It was great seeing Wes play so well. Would prefer to have him not start anymore. And I don't think that's a guarantee if you sign Gary Harris. But I think he would at least push Wes for the job and could potentially be a really nice fifth starter. Or Grayson Allen as well. 
I agree. I agree. Uh, just, I think it was the 16, 17 season, I believe where he really came. Oh yeah. That's when he shot 42% from three. Yeah. Yeah. That was the season where Gary Harris's trade value was high, high. Who was he involved in trade rumors with? He was like a, it's like an early days, Brad Beal rumor or something like that. Oh, that, I think that does sound right. Yeah. He was like the, the was centerpiece there. or whatever. It's like, Oh my God, if you're the wizards, you can get Gary Harris. But no, ever since then, like you mentioned, it's sort of tailed off. Uh, but in Orlando, he sort of rediscovered himself, like you mentioned. I think he'd be great uh, in terms of like defensive skills, offensive skills. Uh, the thing I worry about a little bit, a little bit with Gary Harris is that 6'4". Yeah. And that's that's like, don't get me wrong. He's still on my list. He's still on my big board. Yeah. But I don't know. I kind of, I'm kind of embracing the idea of just getting a ton, a ton of like, just bigger guys who you can like size up. Oh, so like you are, up. you're going just full John Hammond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm and where's all, Thon? Is Thon number two on your board? Thon is actually, uh, he's above Bobby Portis <laughs> on my list. He didn't even make the list. Uh, Thon Maker, please come back. Technically a free but, agent. Yeah, technically. Uh, he's going to be playing for the uh, Australia team during World Cup qualifiers, I think. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. As long as. I think, I'm not yeah, sure. I mean, it's, well. I saw on his Instagram story that he's going to go there to train. So. Well, hopefully there's, there's less flying kicks this time, too. <laughs> we need to bring him back on that alone. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm all the way on board on Gary Harris. That'd be a great, great addition. Just quickly, he had a, I, I forget how much he scored. His two-year peak, his third and fourth years with the Nuggets, over these two seasons combined, 16 points a game, just under three rebounds and assists each. 49% from the field, 40% from three, 55% from two. Like, he was a stud and still, I think, 28 years old? 27, turns 28 before the season in September. Yeah. Ty, he is fifth on my board. Wow. You're high on a lot of guys. Who's your number two? My number two is a guy I've been high on for a little bit. I'm riding this hot streak ever since I called the Bochamp stuff. Like, I'm just riding high. Otto Porter Jr., my number three. So we're okay. not we're not far off on Otto. We just saw him contribute greatly to a title winning team in the Golden State Warriors. He is a like he's still relatively young. He's not even 30 yet. He's 29 years old, ready to be a contributor, can play outstanding defense, knows how to play with the ball in his hands. Six eight, great defender. He just seems like a guy who would fit in perfectly, perfectly into this buck system. Imagine a lineup of Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton. Uh, Giannis, uh, Otto Porter, and Brooke. Like, what are you doing against that lineup? Even take, take, uh, if you want to take uh, Brooke out and put maybe like Wes Matthews in there, what are you doing against a lineup with Drew Holiday, Wes Matthews, Chris Middleton, Giannis, and Otto Porter Jr.? Can you do anything against that? You can switch almost nearly one through five. Uh, basically one through, you can switch one through five. I'm comfortable putting, put Drew on anyone. I'll pick Drew. Oh, yeah. But, you just you're getting you're getting prime Wilt Chamberlain still alive and kicking today uh, on the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, as I, I YouTube viewers are going to be confused, so I'm adjusting my box. I feel like my chin is like barely above sea level here. It feels like I'm drowning in the bottom. There we go. Um, I really like Otto Porter. The thing I didn't realize before, kind of digging more into some of these guys for Porter specifically or Porter Jr. He's been like a knockdown three-point shooter for basically six seasons. His worst three-point shooting season in there was like 37%. And on the whole, since the 16-17 season, 41.3% from deep on more than four attempts per game. So like a guy who has that size, who has switchability, and has just been a reliable knockdown shooter. He rebounds well. He shoots free throws well. You know, I think... I'll almost be surprised if Golden State lets him go. That's the thing. That's the thing. But, Is Golden State really going to let him go after winning a title? I mean, but who knows? We've seen teams like key contributors go right after winning a title. <laughs> we have. And I think, you know, if, if you're Golden State, maybe you're saying we've got Wiggins around. And Wiggins was like, you know, the 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 one everyone crowed about, right? We still got Clay, Kuminga's on the rise, Moise Moody on the rise. Maybe we can afford to lose one wing player. I mean, Joey Lightyears has not spared an expense in the past, which it must be nice. Um, we'll see what happens there. But if he's available, you know, I think if it's more positionally for me that I lean Harris, just because I think a, a real solid two-way two guard would be so nice for the Bucs. Uh, but I, I do think Otto Porter would be, you know, an awesome fit still. 
Do you think it's, a, it's is it a little tight in the front court if they get him and Bobby, or do you look at them as just? I mean, I know they do very different things, but it's just a lot of forwards. I think the beauty of it is that you can play, like mess around with them and sort of like play them in different spots. Like we've seen Bobby size up and play the three in some lineups. Like they they know what they're doing in terms of like uh, positional flexibility. So I sort of trust this coaching staff to really figure that one out because like you said, they are very different players. You can play them in very different roles. So it's not necessarily that one's going to cannibalize the other's minutes. It's that how do we let these two sort of coexist because they do uh, do very different things on the basketball court. It's a good point. Um, all right. So then I think you're number three. Number th- yeah, yeah, you're number three because mine is Otto. Yeah, my number three might be a little uh, like Otto, maybe a little not so feasible. Uh, but there are reports that he's taken, he's taken offers, and that's Nicholas Batum. Uh, I have him a little lower. Um, two, three, four, five. I think I have him six or seven. The man who, uh, if Giannis said he became him, he's going back to Greece. Uh, <laughs> he's not coming for that circle. reason alone. <laughs> it'd be perfect full circle if they could get him back, uh, get him to Milwaukee, not back to Milwaukee. But just a guy who ever since he got bought out by the Charlotte Hornets, can you remember when he signed that massive deal with the Hornets? And then just came to came to the Clippers and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, this guy's still awesome. Uh, he can still be a great, great contributor. He's getting a little older now. I mean, he's not even 34 yet, but he's still like getting up there in terms of like a lot of miles on his body. Uh, can you rely on him to play so, like a super consistent role? Maybe, maybe not. He has shown that he can do that in L.A., though. Like, he started, what did he start, 54 games out of the 59 he played for the Clippers this past season? Given, is that a lot because Kawhi Leonard missed the entirety yeah, of the season? Paul probably, George of course. missed a lot of the yeah. season? Yes. But even in that, in like, large role, he's still shooting 40% from three, still bringing in over four rebounds, still dishing out nearly two assists. And he's a guy who's not going to get beat on the defensive end because of lapses in judgment or mistakes. It's, if anything, it's going to come down to athleticism at this point. But he is a smart, smart basketball player who knows how to be in the correct position. It's just you can't have you can't have too many of those type of guys. I agree. I mean, he's on my list. I have seven. I just I numbered them uh, as you spoke, and I just I do worry. I, I want to, part of it is feasibility, just because it sounds like the Clippers. That was as soon as he opted out. It was like he intends to work with the Clippers on a deal. And part of but it is – there were reports like, hey, the Lakers are interested. The Celtics are interested. Like, I'm sure a lot of teams to are pitches. interested. Yeah. I think he's going to listen to pitches. He, he should, certainly. They have so many wing players there and, and with the Clippers, I should say, um, that he could have a bigger role somewhere else. I am also a little worried about the age. You just never know when, you know – there's been former Hornets forwards that we love that the Bucks acquired before that maybe just didn't have enough left in the tank. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> shout out to shout out to Marv Marvin Williams. I almost it, said Marvin saying, Harrison. Seeing that he retired live on a pod was one of the saddest things I've ever done. I know he. I wanted to get him a ring really bad, um, and he, I thought he played well overall. Just couldn't shoot. Um, but I, I like Nick Batum. I would be be fine if they signed him, but I wouldn't be over the moon. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should have had him a little lower, That's, but uh, it's fine. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, who's your who's your number four? I think this might be controversial because I don't know if people think he's very good, and I kind of left off some. Like I didn't put Oladipo on my list. I'm worried we have the same person here. <laughs> I'm just I'm over Oladipo. I just I don't know, and especially I factored in like maybe West comes back, maybe Javon comes back, and it's like okay with those two guys and Bochamp and to a certain extent Drew. Like, how many defensive first guards can be on the roster, right? And maybe they don't bring two of those guys back, and then it makes more sense. But anyway, uh, my number four is DeLon Wright. Oh, we don't have the same person. Okay. I am a DeLon Wright true believer. I think he's one of those guys where you can pull it up and look, and what he averaged, like, four points per game last year or whatever, and you're like, oh, he stinks. He doesn't do anything. 4.4 points. He's just been, like, quietly a very reliable three-point shooter over the last few years with a lot of different teams. Um, maybe very reliable is excessive, but over the last three years, he's been about 37%, which is fine. But he's just like a very dependable ball handler. Uh, he doesn't turn the ball over. He's not going to rack up assists, but he's always like, I think for his career, he's almost exactly three assists to one turnover per game. He just doesn't play that much. He doesn't do a ton, but he's he kind of, 
he's like, I think a less impactful version of original Bucks George Hill. And that it's just like very solid, moves the ball, will set guys up, plays solid defense, not a huge player by any means. But, you know, you trust him to knock down some threes. He actually is 6'5", so not bad for a quote-unquote point guard. But I, I could just see him being a good fit. Seems like, you know, an, a quiet guy, which would probably fit in pretty well with the Bucks. although I don't know DeLon Wright personally or anything. Um, but I just think I'm just craving that ball handler, and DeLon Wright seems like a very feasible, uh, a very solid option for Milwaukee. Let's say he was not on my list. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. I I don't disagree with you there. I do think he would be a valuable addition to this team, just in terms of, like you said, a dependable ball handler. Uh, just someone who's like not going to get beat by size. Uh, I so I'm so surprised. I thought we had the same person, Todd. I, I can't he's, wait to hear who yours is. He still might be on your list. But this is a throwback to last year. It's Malik Monk. Not on my list. Okay. He disappeared from the earth. He did. He really did. <laughs> so that, that left him unranked for me. I don't know what to make of that. When he was playing with the Lakers, like he did, he did start 37 games. He did play in 76 games last year. That's wild. Am I thinking of someone else? I think you're thinking of, uh, what's his name? Uh, shoot. Uh, yeah, I am thinking. Kendrick Nunn. Kendrick yeah, Nunn. I'm thinking of Kendrick Nunn. He's the one who totally, Malik Monk was just out early and then he came and played pretty well. You're right. Go ahead. He's not on my list. Forgot he existed. Yeah, Malik, he was the top free agent on your board last year, Ty. <laughs> Shot 39%, so I, I don't know what was more wrong. Me putting him that high last time or me leaving him off this time? I don't know. I'm giving. I'm trying to give you some credit for last year on this one because I think, would he be like someone who's going to be on the floor in crunch time? No, absolutely not. And probably no. and definitely shouldn't be. Is he someone who can just get you through some portions of a season as a break, and, and as a break glass in case of emergency offense guy? Yes. He could be that type of guy for you. Like, he's going to put up a lot of shots. He's going to get some offense going. Like I mentioned uh, in the uh, podcast you alluded to earlier in terms of what we thought the Bucks should get, like the types of positions they need going into this offseason, a microwave-type score is a good option. And Malik Monk sort of fits that bill. So that's why I had him on this list. He's still, like, he's not even 25 yet. Like, if he, if he wants to compete for a title, he's probably going to leave the Lakers. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I think I think it's feasible, potentially feasible. Plus, I think it'd be a valuable addition. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I may adjust and put him at the tail end of my list here just because you do make some good points. And even if, you know, with being so offensive focused, he doesn't scream a Bucksy player by any means. Um, I, I still think there's so much potential there. And you talk about someone who at least has the offensive uh, skill set to potentially vie for that starting shooting guard spot. I do think, you know, is there a, kind of a weird overlap there with Grayson Allen? Yes, but there is still more talent here than I think some guys lower on my list. So I think that's a good call by you. And I, I might, I might, I need to do a little bit more deliberation, but I might sneak him in here um, for a different guard that I have down at number nine. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Number I've five heard. on my list was Gary Harris. So okay. Yeah. So we uh, we covered that one. Yeah, I got I added Malik Monk as ten on my list. I took off Austin okay. Rivers for what it's worth. Austin Rivers had Austin okay. Rivers ninth. You can't. He's the guy you can't quit, Ty. Here comes Austin Rivers, one of the best. If you're unaware, just Google that. It's a great clip. It's it's really really good. Um, so that was your number five. That was Malik Monk was my number four. Yes, but Garris. Yeah, I like I to combine Garris. Garris. Like Garrison Matthews? I think there's a – is it Mass Effect? I think there's like a villain or something named Garris. I don't know. But if there is, I'm going to post pictures of him if the Bucks signed Gary Harris. Yeah, it went over your head. It might not even be true. It might it might have gone over everyone's head. Don't worry. Um, so number five on my list. This is a weird one. Um, but it's the sole big man I think on my list, true big man. Isaiah Hartenstein. I just – He's like really good and really underrated. And I think like Zubats, if you look at free agents is on there, there's a club option the Clippers have. There's no way they're not going to take Zubats for like 7 million. Like he's good. Hartenstein is just like a very skilled, like if you look at the advanced metrics, what he allows, I don't, can't remember if it's like just pick and rolls or the paint in general, 
But it's like an elite number. Like he's just like really sound defensively. He does stuff offensively. He rolls. I don't think he's a perfect fit by any means. And it would feel weird if the Bucks used, you know, their their MLE, like their big spending chip, on a guy who's just going to be a backup. Like right? a seven foot center won't start this year. Brooke Lopez will start. But if you get him into the system and have him ready as the eventual successor, that's like that's a really high level outcome, I think, for the center position where right now, you know, it's basically like Hope Brook stays good for a long time. Like that that's the long term plan right now, at least what it looks from the outside. Um, so even though it's weird and I think a lot of people would hate it because this season the fit's not really there, I would just be excited to get him in the building. Also, shot 46% on threes last year on like five probably attempted threes. But uh, still, he, he at least tried it out. 30 attempts actually, so not not terrible. It's a decent sample. Yeah. Uh, we were texting about this player before uh, this podcast. I did a lot of deliberation about it. Yeah. And I left him off the list. It's fair. Just, it's such a weird fit. It's not yeah. a, it's, he's not, there's no role. Like there's such a limited role for him this year. Yeah, exactly. I think he's too good to be in the role that the Bucks would have for him necessarily. So that's why I left him off, off my list. Not because I don't think he's good, not because I don't think he's like a valuable addition to the team. I think he'd be great. Like you mentioned, if you want to get a guy in the building, that's the guy to get in the building. I just don't know if it would really work out for this season. And especially yeah. if you're using your mid level, yeah. you're going to, a guy's going to want to contribute right away. Yeah. It would really, it'd be, it'd be kind of weird almost how much he would have to be bought into like being the successor at center and not the immediate center. I know, you know, maybe listen, I, Brook is clearly not bulletproof, and although he looked great when he came back, I mean, he obviously missed a lot of last season. So it's not to say that there would be no playing time for him this season, but I do think it, it would be, you know, nothing guaranteed for the most part. And he might end up in a Robin Lopez type situation where, of course, pretty much Brook's healthiest year, the Bucks didn't go up against any post heavy centers in the playoffs. There was just nothing there for him. So I think that's probably a good reason. But I think the talent and the long-term outlook is so high, I just had to include him. I think this is more feasible if you get a buyout guy like John Wall, who we just didn't include here because he's not yet a free agent. But if you only have to use Vettman. He might be. He might be soon. Yeah, they're talking about resolutions. But, you know, if you only have to use Vet Min because that player's salary is offset anyway, then maybe this is more palatable. But I still think it's, it's just unlikely all around. Yeah. Yeah, completely agree there. Um, was he number five for you? Yep. Who's number six for you? Old friend. I almost wanted to put him higher. The legend, Tony Snell. Tony Snell. He's not on my list. Wow, you left Tony he Snell. Should, wow. He should have been on my list, but he's not. You look at Tony Snell's like shooting numbers, and it's just like, how is Tony Snell never talked about? It's because he's, he's literally embodied his own meme. Yeah, he actually, remember when he didn't miss a free throw for like four years? Yeah, and I like think he still hasn't missed a free throw in like two years. <laughs> it's just like so solid, so dependable. And again, I think there's people who probably roll their eyes and think like, really, the Bucks' big offseason ad is Tony Snell. Like, maybe he's he's good. He's a good defender. He converts three point shots with Atlanta in twenty twenty in twenty the twenty 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 one season. You know Tony Snell shot on threes that year? 47 games played without looking. No, I'm not looking. Uh, probably like 40. 56.9%. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Didn't he have the first like 50, 50, 100 season ever? Um, let's Obviously, look. he didn't qualify because of uh, actual like benchmarks to get there. but He did indeed. Yeah. yeah no, he actually, he didn't. Years he did. Oh, yeah, he, he didn't did. miss a free throw. He did. He shot. He only shot 42. It was a bad year. It was an uncharacteristically bad year from two, but it was a small sample overall. But yeah, 51% from the field, 57% from three, and uh, 100% from free throw. He has not missed a free throw since he was last a buck. Wow. He hasn't taken many in that time, mind you, but he has uh, we, not we, missed. We don't have to mention that. Time. 47 for 47. 47 for 47 since leaving the Bucks. Um, just a really solid option. And I think a guy who's probably really underrated given like he's not a bad defender and he's just very solid at play finishing in terms of shooting and trying to dunk on the offensive end. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe he's just been biding his time trying to perfect the dunk so he could get back to Milwaukee. First play is a poster. I would lose my mind 
if that happened, I might just like, I don't know what I'd do in that situation. I might just go like, if it's a home game, I just might go run down to the arena and like break in and be like, what on earth just happened? I just, I don't get it with Tony Stallings. Shoot 50, 51.7% from two and 41.1% from three since the beginning of his first Bucks stint. That's like six years. Yeah. He's good. He's a good player. He is good. He is good. Solid defender. Solid Underrated defender. even Shoot. by you. He is. I, I'm honestly upset with myself that he's not on my list. I mean, I, I, I had to make to a change to mine. If you have to change, you have to change. We all understand. You know what? I'm taking, I'm taking Aaron Holiday off. Oh, yeah. I didn't see him as very – he's probably as feasible. It just doesn't excite me that much. Yep. He's moved up to number seven for me. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, that's where Aaron Holiday was. Nice. Okay. So then I think we're at your number six now yes, that you've disrespected number... Snell season and Tony Snell. He's back. He's on there. My number six, Thaddeus Young. Oh, I left him off. I probably shouldn't have. He's He sort of fits – like, I think you can tell what type of player I really like. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, my uh, my selections, you get Otto Porter, you got Nick Batum, Gary Harris to a lesser extent, but then Thaddeus Young, just a solid defender who you can switch and just trust to handle. Like you want that if he has the ball in his hands, four or five guy back. Yeah, yeah. With him, he knows how to pass. He knows how to play smart defense. Knows how to play within like a good team offense. Can play off of guys really well. Just, just the whole package. I think, I think he might, uh, might re up with the Raptors. I think that's been the sort of the feel, but we'll see. Who knows? Uh, players have chose not to stay in Toronto after being traded there in the past. Uh, so, so we'll see what happens with Thaddeus Young. Maybe he wants to play for a contender. You know? Maybe he does. Um, we'll see. I wanted, I wanted to see if it was possible to trade for him at the deadline. I think he got like what, like. Raptors gave him a pick or something for him. They basically moved down. I think they yeah, got a second. That's what it was. I think they got a second, a pretty good second, and gave up the first. So it wasn't it wasn't truly giving up a first. Yeah, but we'll see. I think he'd be a great fit, but he's just that sort of mold, that Otto Porter mold, that Nicholas Batum mold. Just just a little lower on the totem pole for me. I think I have a pretty similar player to him eighth on my board. So we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. Thadjik Johnson. Oh my God. The graphic. Oh, if they get him, I can't oh, wait graphic. to see that graphic every day. It's like him, LeBron, Larry Bird, and somebody. I think it's like magic's on there too. Yeah. Because of like, you know, they're all with these very specific statistical benchmarks. Yeah, let me see if I can find it quick. Oh, I found it right away. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, if you Google Thad, it's like it's like So play, players with 800 games to average 13.5 <laughs> points, 5.9 rebounds, 1.4 steals, 49% uh, on field goals and 30% from 3. You got Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Thaddeus Young. I forgot Michael Jordan was I love that three of the guys had like well more than double the points. And then Magic oh, yeah. probably didn't have that many more, but certainly had more than 13.1. Thir- yeah, 13.5. Don't 13, sorry, that. sorry, 13. Don't shortchange him that 0.4 points per game. You're right. That is disrespectful of me. <laughs> Pacers, Pacers, Thaddeus Young. My goodness. Um did we did we do your number six? Uh yeah, that's Tony Snell. Okay, and my number seven is Tony Snell. So who's your seven? Uh, we did that too. That's Nick Batum. Oh, shoot. Okay, Lower so we're down to number board. eight. We're already down to number eight. Yeah, we're flying. Okay, my number eight, Carmelo Anthony. Wow, not on my list. So here's the thing. We have the opposite, literally the opposite players are our number eights, by the way. It's it's a really <laughs> fun contrast. I'm very excited to hear who yours is. But here's the thing about Carmelo Anthony. He did well last season. He was a good, solid contributor for the Lakers last season because he wasn't asked to do a lot. Like, even though he had, like, like LeBron missed some time, Anthony Davis missed a lot of time, um, like Malik Monk missed a portion of the beginning of the season. Like, Melo was a steady, steady contributor. He's really transformed his game after the whole out-of-the-league uh fiasco is that might be too strong of a word but in terms of like can he be like a steady role player yes can you rely on him to hit shots yes can you rely on him to play solid defense no 
But that's what Absolutely you get from not. age 38, Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. But if you, again, it's sort of that Malik Monk role. I wonder why the Lakers didn't succeed. They're all their entire <laughs> team is filled with these players. Their whole team, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just, can he go in there? Can he get you some buckets? Can he be a break glass in case of emergency guy? Yes. I, I just want options. No, I get that. And I, I do think Melo, you know, it's funny now looking back, people are like, they blackballed Carmelo out of the league. No, Carmelo airballed himself out of the league for about a year because he was terrible as a three-point shooter with Houston and Oklahoma City. If you look at why he's back now, it's because when he played in Portland, he was suddenly a 38% free th- three-point shooter, which he had not been that good since the 13-14 season back when he was still an all-star. Like, role player Melo had to be a better three-point shooter. And credit to him, because now he is. Now he's like a 40-plus or 37 this past year on a pretty bad offensive team. 40% the year before his second Portland season. Like, he's just a good, uh, uh, like, tertiary offensive option. Would be a really fun buck. Would be really cool to have Carmelo around, I think. I've always liked Carmelo as a person. First ballot Hall of Famer. Seems like a stand-up classy guy. Just one of the best all-time careers in basketball. A lot of if you can uh, get one of those guys on your team, you're not going to say no. Yeah, a lot of really cool Giannis moments early in his career that this was the guy Giannis I think, oh, really yeah. looked up to. Um, He's the first guy that's uh, really tested. His first game, right? Giannis's first game was against the Knicks. I believe his first game and his first start both came against yeah. Carmelo's Knicks. Um, and it was a, a big lot of deal history for him. between the two. And yeah. Carmelo immediately respected him. Yep. And still, the, like, the crazy thing about Carmelo is like decrepit Carmelo. He's never scored below 13 points per game in a season. He probably would if he was with the Bucks. Probably? I mean, he's going to have such a reduced role. Know, but these last two years, he came off the bench. I mean, I know that's true. much worse teams, but it's not like he was starting. He did play a lot of minutes. I don't think he'd play. He'd, he would average less, but I would say probably still double digits. Maybe. Which would be incredible. That would be, that'd be really helpful. Yeah. You've kind of sold me, but I'm still going to... He's really close to swapping in for my number nine guy, but I'm going to keep that, that guy for content. Okay. I'm very I, would, I would be happy. I'd really prefer a vet min for Melo and one of these other guys. Yes, yes. That's the Mello ideal would world. Be a vet min. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah, number eight, the, yeah, the opposite player, excited. would not be obtainable for a vet min, we are learning. It's probably not obtainable at all, but I'm nostalgic. PJ Tucker. <laughs> Literally the anti Carmelo. <laughs> Does PJ Tucker really, ever really, average 13 per game? This is a fun, abs- like, shift. Absolutely not. Without looking, absolutely not. Let's see what PJ Tucker career career scoring high in a season was. Uh, no. No, no, no. Not even. No, he's never hit 10. So he's literally... His career is 9.4. Yeah. And that was in 13-14 with the uh, Suns. Almost a decade ago. <laughs> PJ worse at everything offensively, better at everything defensively. Um, again, the opposite players uh, sign both. That'd be that'd be a fun off season if they came away and said we got PJ Tucker and Carmelo. I'd say hell yeah. There's some certain some holes at guard depending on who else is brought back, but um, I would love to have those two guys both on the team. But I, I just um, you know we saw what they can do, and I think it's pie in the sky, which is why I dropped him this low. Just because I mean it, it's kind of weird. I mean desired outcomes, he's probably higher, but also there is a factor too of. You know, he's older than last time we saw him. We know the shooting is not always, sometimes not ever there. He's not a perfect fit. I mean, I think that's that's clear, right? Like, they made it work. He's not a perfect fit. Would be great to have him back, though. Can still defend his ass off. We know the mentality he brings. And it doesn't seem like it's going to happen because apparently James Harden is going to take less so the Sixers can give him, like, $30 million over three years, which the Bucks simply cannot do. Uh, But if it is, if that falls apart, whatever, uh, I'd be happy to have PJ back on the roster. I mean, it'd be great. There's apparently uh, a lot of a lot of tampering going on. (laughs) Yeah. Who could who could see this coming? A lot of tampering uh, going on. Let's see if Philly loses the pick, loses a pick uh, for it. The draft is like in three years, there's going to be like five second round picks. The rest are all taken away. Uh, or they're just going to stop taking picks away. Yeah, I mean, now that they got Milwaukee, it doesn't. Who cares anymore, right? Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, but three years, 30 million has been floated around for what feels like a week now. And we still have a couple yeah. days to go until like not no one's being this egregious nowadays. Like this is egregious, right? No, I feel like uh, well, the Kyrie stuff uh, was pretty. I mean, he was clearly talking to the Lakers, which seems kind of. A little sus. I, see, that's a that's a little that's a little less egregious than a player who is not hit free agency yet already basically coming to terms on an agreement. I think I well I I mean I think Kyrie and the Lakers got to the same place. He just didn't like, like you can, the deal with Kyrie. You can still request permission to seek sign and trades. Like that's a legal thing you can do. I don't so, I don't know if you can do sign and trade. Can you? I know. I, I know you, they did you it. You can but, request permission just basically for anything. But I didn't think you could discuss a signing before, even well, if let's with say, permission. It's weird. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, might I don't be know. Wrong. I don't I might know. Be wrong. But what? Regardless, it's very illegal. Yeah, huge uh, tamper. It seems like a done deal. But I mean, it's the Sixers. Hilarious stuff happens to the Sixers. Is all that's I'll true. Say. That's so. true. But PJ, PJ would be awesome. I'm not going to yeah. say no to PJ. Never. You're never going to hear me say no to PJ. PJ, if you want to come back, I will welcome you back with open arms and I will give you a massive hug. I bet P- PJ looks like a great hugger. I feel like he'd be a great hugger. The wingspan. Yeah. Wrap you up real good. Yeah. Plus, it's just like he's got the dog mentality, you know? That's that's spread. Does he, can he take credit for that? You feel like he brought oh, it. Yeah, brought 100%, 100%. More mainstream. Like, it was already yeah. a thing, but he no, just, like, propelled it's... Yeah, it's different because of PJ for sure. I, I think I'm, I'm glad. Have you seen the meme where it's like an, an X ray of a chest cavity and then like a bunch of pictures of dogs in it? He got that dog. That's like one of my favorite. I just think it's good. I don't. There are some Bucks fans who right away were like, "No one else should say that." Because like the Heat were saying it, and I was like, "It's just a good phrase." You know, it's I would prefer fun. if it say with the Bucks, but it's there's more there's more dogs than just in Milwaukee, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, but PJ Tucker definitely the opposite of Carmelo. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Although we both um, like we both like the others player too. Yes. Uh, are we at, are we down to number nine? We are, and my number ten has been revealed as as Malik Monk. So I only have nine left on my. Okay, board. I'll, I'll say my nine first. Then. Okay. So since I didn't have Hartenstein on here, I made sure I got a big. Uh, this is gonna make you happy, Ty. Bismack Biombo. Oh my guy, Bismack. Good play. Might have to turn tweeter alerts back on for him. I know I had, I had tw- I think I had IG alerts. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I had followed him like a month ago. I had him followed the whole season. I would just You're be going through my re-follow. IG. I will have to refollow him. <laughs> uh, just I don't. He, here's the thing with Bismack. I don't know if it's the Chris Paul effect. Or yeah. He's really good still. Yeah. Because it's tough to tell because Chris Paul could take any big guy and just sort of make him seem like freaking, I don't know, Prime Amari. Maybe right. not Prime Amari, but really good. But yeah, good. Yeah. I think the Suns are grappling with how much of that played in the Aiton's offensive surge the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and look what happened with JaVale McGee. Uh, with them. I mean, JaVale's been good for a, lo- a while now. So Frank maybe... Kaminsky looked good there. Yeah. Enough said, man. Yeah. So maybe that's why he's super low. I just wanted to get a big in there who I knew would be a vet man. And it's like, we've seen him have success. Plus, he seems like a stand-up guy. So I don't have a big at nine. I would swap in a different big, though, if I was going to have another one, more of a vet man guy. I think I'd rather just have Boogie. Oh, yeah. Bring me Boogie back. He, yeah. Bismack is probably better defensively, but like, you know, I don't think Bismack is like anchoring the drop and, you know, doing all this stuff. Like, it's not like what we thought maybe Walker Kessler or someone like that could do. So, like, just give me the offense. Just, you know, honestly, like, you're basically just saying effort. Like, defense will be what it is, but we know what Boogie could do offensively. I just saw the clip of him, the West dime to him again. The Bucks shared it today. What a great play. And Boogie was awesome. So I like Bismack. I, I, again, like there's this group of big men who, you know, I think we're past, unless the Hartenstein thing somehow somehow happens, we're past finding a long-term replacement this year. And who knows, trades, who knows what, what could happen. Um, but I, I, we were just like, if you need a year stopgap, Boogie was pretty pretty fun and pretty useful when he was a buck last this past season. And John Horst even said, like, there's nothing prohibiting us from – uh, reuniting with yeah. him or something to that effect. So, Doors uh, open. Door door remains open uh, for Demarcus Cousins to come back. That'd be fun. That'd be yeah. really fun. Um, tenth on my list. Wait, 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 I still have my ninth. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. Who's your ninth? See, it's funny because this is a player I've talked down on a bunch. 
And I'm still not sure. I'm still not sure he's good, but I just I want to take the flyer. The body type, the stats, some of what he's able to do is so intriguing to me that I would take the flyer, even though I'm not sure he's actually good. Who do you think it is? I think it's Lou Williams. No, I think I'm wrong. no, I think Lou Will is kind of good, but I didn't I didn't pick him here. Just defensive and age concerns. Torian Prince. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I know. I, I, he's tenth, you know, for or ninth, I guess. I'll probably just put him tenth and move Malik Monk up one. It doesn't excite me that much, but it's like I'll take a flyer, right? Like he's definitely going to be better than Shemi, which means potentially an NBA player, which is good. Uh, he's had double-digit scoring seasons. He was down a little bit last year. Kind of a weird fit with with Minnesota. They they wanted to go defense instead, and he's certainly not like a a defensive lockdown guy. But six seven ish, twenty eight year old power forward, and the thing about him is like he's played on mostly pretty bad teams. I'd kind of like to see what he's like on a pretty good team for once. So I, I don't know. I'm intrigued. It probably comes down to like, you know, does he have a good relationship with Bud, who he did play for, uh, for I think two years actually. Uh, but that was the checked out Hawks are not good, Bud. I don't know. I, I'd be kind of interested, although I'm not like, I'm not amped about it. I see the vision there. Like yeah. you mentioned the body type, sort of the archetype of the player. I would be interested in that just to, you know, like like a flyer. See see if yeah. he's got anything. Like vet, a Rodney Hood-esque Vet man, I would hope here. Yeah. I should have had Big Rod on this list. I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean, let's hear who for, your number 10 is, but I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> just be for vibes only. <laughs> Coach. Um, but uh, number 10 for me, Goran Dragic. Oh, see, no, I, I am convinced he stinks. It's not great. He is 10 <laughs> on my board for a reason. Um, I just think, like, if you're moving on from George Hill this season, this offseason, I should say, you want a guy, it's like, hey, can this guy do things with the ball? Potentially. Good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he moves he it. Definitely, he has experience. He has experience. He's got a lot sure. of experience. So, like, I don't know, man. He broke my heart, and then he didn't even play well. Yeah. So. Hey, we got Javon, though. That's true. It worked out, but I kind of hate Goran's guts now. Yeah, it's kinda, it kind of seems terrible. I kind of even hate Zoran now. <laughs> he wasn't even involved, but, like, kind of goes with the, the territory there. Yeah, yeah, I think the three-point shooting is just so gone, I'm, I'm kind of out. I'd rather – I'd honestly, like, just play Javon and Luca more, and I think I'd be happier. Um, but I, I see the vision and wanting to go for him and see if there's more. Like there. a chance, a chance. Like, let's say this is only if, like, let's say George Hill is gone and Javon is gone. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been here with wanting to give Blake a flyer, so I see where you're coming from. Just, like, see what happens. Yeah. If not, you can gut him. It, it'll be a vet min and nothing else. Yeah, I, I'm with it. Should we run through some? Uh, I have a couple other players, like, on my board who didn't make the top 10. Do you mind if I run through them? And you can throw any of yours that, that didn't make it. We can be quicker with these, I think. The guy who was very close for me, my other like vet min big who I'd be fine with, Gorgie Jang. Oh, okay. Pretty good. A pretty good yeah. player. For sure. You know, not, nothing too exciting. I ultimately left ultimately left TJ Warren off. Yeah, but I just I don't know if it's feasible. I think it's feasible. I, well, yeah, I don't know if it's feasible. You don't know where he's at. Um, and I just – the Bucks need a ball handler, but th- do they need a guy who's just going to like take a billion shots? I don't know. I don't know if they do. Yeah, see, I, I don't know. Like I don't know if the fit is good. Maybe. I mean it's – you know, if they sign him for a very cheap deal, like sure, let's see how he looks. I'm just I, – I don't know. I'm skeptical of him a little bit. Hmm. For health reasons and and fit reasons, you just haven't seen him play since the bubble. Yeah, I mean he was great there, but it's it's quite a while. Now. Or I think he played like a couple regular season games. I think that's season. right. I think that's right. Um, but yeah, I had slow mo. Uh, slow mo, true. Yeah, but again, feasibility. I think he's probably worth more. Uh, and like, really, not a floor spacer. And I just think like. You know, okay, it'd be cool if you got a player that good in free agency without much money to spend, but really a really bad fit, I think, slow mo is. What were you gonna say uh before I, I mentioned him? No, I was just gonna go through some of my plays. Like oh, yeah, Aaron yeah. Holiday. Aaron Holiday yep. I mentioned. 
Uh, just, you know, like a capable defensive guard. Like if there's no Javon, can you, like we have Javon at home and that's Aaron Holiday. Yeah. Uh, and Drew's brother, yeah, well, which would be cool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, who's another guy? My Isak Bonga. I had him too. So this was, I tweeted earlier today. Like I, I was more intrigued in some guys like this, like slow-mo as well. Like, you know, wings who can defend and or have upside, but don't shoot. And it's like, we got one now. And I'm not more interested in Bonga than Bochamp. And I'm just like, okay, I would I would never see a reason for him to play then. Yeah. Like we like we've seen him in person play with the G League. He probably spent a lot of time with the herd. Yeah. Uh yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Just like you don't find young guys very often. So it's like if you get a chance, like, hey, see what this guy has. Right. Take a chance. But again, he's not on my big board for a reason. Yeah. Um, I looked at Jeremy Lamb. I'm just not sure he's good anymore. Yeah, I don't know if he is. It'd be it would be very much like signing Rodney Hood. I mean, the injury thing is different, but it should just be like, you know, let's bring you in and see what you got in the tank. I mean, he's you know been on a couple bad teams the last few years, but I you know if that's the big name they sign, that's pretty disappointing. What about Ben McLemore? Yeah, I, I looked at Daniel House, who I'm convinced is kind of just like the same player. Um, not that ex- – I mean, you know, again, it, I would – it would feel very much like Big Rod slash Shemmy of just like, let's just throw a dart and see if it sticks. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, Josh Jackson. That would be a little more interesting, but I just I, – I don't see the role. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what he is. I don't either. I, they I don't just keep knows. shoving him in the G League for the whole year. It's like that's not very promising. Oh, wait. Udonis has him. That's number one. <laughs> God. Uh, TA is the new UD, so we're good. Uh, I had Robin Lopez for consideration. Yeah. Just not very That's exciting, true. but, you know, a good backup big guy for sure. Um, another big guy, Dwayne Dedman. Oh, yeah. The mechanic, the the heat beat guys have started calling him, which I like the as a mechanic. nickname. Yeah, just like, you know, dirty work guy, I think. I haven't dug into why, but uh, it's a cool nickname. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't say no. Like, you, you can never have too many guys like that. No. Marvin Bagley? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that one, Chief. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be like a it'd be a really random ups- upside swing for the Bucks, where they probably just don't need to do that. Yeah, I'm just scrolling through free agents now. Dwight Howard. Yeah, I mean, sure, right? If that's their backup center, Why not? I, it kind of a weird guy. It seems like he's toned down over the last couple of years. It does seem that way. I wonder. I wonder hey, how you, much it. You would never c- know. He likes Milwaukee. He does Shout like Gus Johnson. Yeah. Um, I considered Bryn Forbes. True. That'd be – get the band back together. We know what he is. We know what the limitations are, but we know what he is. But I don't know if you can have a roster with Bryn Forbes and Grayson Allen. I'm not really interested in both. No. No, for sure. Uh, Markeith Morris is technically free. He's a free agent. If he can play anymore. The yeah, which we'll ended this man's career. Yeah. We don't talk about that much. If Giannis did it, we would talk about it more. Yeah, that's fair. Greg Monroe, bring him back. I, I, I wouldn't be mad. Again, if it's like a vet men guy. If that, if that, I think probably around around PJ on my board is where I go from like, oh, I'd be excited about this guy to, yeah, I mean, bring that guy in as another guy. But that should not be the main free agent focus. No, for sure. I think we're starting to run out of names. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jalen Smith, I'd take a look at, I guess. He kind of became an interesting center, but I feel like the Pacers probably will too. Okay. Kevin Knox, no. 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 Man, does he, what does he do well in a basketball court? Be Run six, jump. Six? Run jump, yeah. Can he jump? Maybe. Couldn't tell you. We skipped Patty Mills. He's not – I don't think – he's opting in. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he should. He did not look great. Uh, I wouldn't be all that – I mean, I'd be kind of interested on the right deal. He's like, what, a six million? Six million, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's opting into that. Uh, Dennis Schroeder? No. Yeah, I just – I think we all just hate him. I think Adam is, has worn us all down. Avery Bradley? Bud hates him. <laughs> that too. Avery Bradley? Nope. Yeah, kind of washed. Also, like really small. Small Good players defender, don't age gracefully, though. Last one. Last name I'll throw. One guy we should talk about. We skip buyout guys. We This player is not a buyout guy. I just think it's impossible. Mo Bamba, who people yeah. will be clamoring. We should cover that. Probably the last player we need to talk about. 
I just – so here's the thing. The Bucks can offer – what is it? Like three years, 20 million or something max, something around there. Yeah. The Magic just match it every day. Even if they even if they don't want Mo Bamba, if he signs that match. offer sheet, you match it and you trade him on an insane value contract. Even if it's just two of the bucks. Like, here, give us George Hill in a first and you can have him after all. But and maybe they just do a sign and trade. Well, the Bucks actually can't take a player in a sign and trade. Um, and actually, is there a no acquiring thing with offer sheets? I have to look that up. Maybe they can't do you, that. No, if you sign an offer sheet, you cannot be sign and traded. Are you and I no, I don't think you can even be traded there. Oh, true, true, true. But I yeah, could be yeah. wrong. I need to look. I think but, it's the same same sort of rules in terms of like uh, how many teams have you been on since you left a team? Yeah, like since you've been traded by a team to come back. Right, but regardless, like I just don't see unless they really just non tender him, which I don't know why you do because he looks pretty good. Um, which yeah, anything is possible, but I think we both probably left him off because of feasibility at this point. Yeah. Also, maybe John Hammond does us a favor. Maybe. Also, I, I just want to get this out there. He's not as good as Buck's Twitter thinks. No, he's not like the second coming of Jesus or something. Yeah, like people post about Mo Bamba. Like he's just going to walk in the door and be your starting like all damn near all-star level center for the next 10 years. It's just like, is he a good player? Yes. Could he, he be help? Isaiah yes. Hartenstein? Probably. Yeah, I think he's probably better offensively. But I just like, I don't know. He's a fine player. It's just would be a good, a solid, you know, shot at, at trying to replace Brooke long term. He's not going to do everything Brooke does. Um, but I just think like, let's pump the brakes a little. It's Mo Bamba, man. Yeah. Like, do I think he has high upside? Yes. Do I yeah. think he could be good? Yes. Is he that that good? No. No. I, I mean, no, no one has been this excited as Bucks Twitter is about Mo Bamba since Sheck Wes. <laughs> That's the list of people really excited about Mo Bamba. And probably John Hammond at some point. Maybe still. Yeah, for sure. That's the, that's the list. Um, Ish Wayne, right? We're done. We're done. <laughs> We're done. No. no man's, built, man's built like a tank. Okay. I mean, what? Oh, man. Sign the Wizards guy from the G League then who I was obsessed with how jacked he was. Now I can't remember oh, his name. That guy? Admiral Schofield. Oh, yeah. Sign Admiral <laughs> Schofield if you just want someone who's jacked. Yeah, which the Bucks do uh, like guys who live in the gym, so maybe they will sign Admiral Schofield. Probably not though, because he's not very good at basketball. Sorry, Admiral, if you're listening, don't fight yeah. me. Yeah, you'll win. <laughs> Wouldn't be much of a fight. Uh, that'd be awesome if Admiral Schofield was listening to this. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say if Admiral Schofield fought you. I was gonna say no. It <laughs> I, mean, wouldn't. I mean, the content would. Ty, you gotta be without take... a co-host. I think I would perish, Rohan. Nah, he's not. Nah, he's not gonna kill you. I mean, I don't think he's gonna murder me, but I think I might die in the ring. No, I mean, like, here's the thing. I don't think that's illegal. It's not. Yeah. So it's not on him. I'm not blaming him or saying he's No, I'm just a, like, are we saying it's a ring or are we saying it's like a street fight? A ring, like a boxing. I think that's worse for you. I know. I agree. Well, no, so I, I don't know. I think it is. I think it is because, like, at least in street fighting, you can, like, pull your punches better. But in a street fight, I think you're less inclined to. Because it's, like, yeah, more, it, it's like, more violent. You, if you know that this guy is getting in a boxing ring with you, that sort of like takes away a lot of that stuff. Well, as a street fight, it's like you see this guy doesn't have it. You're not going to go all out. I don't know, man. I mean, if, if we're in a street fight, who's to say? If it's a boxing ring, he's going to go for the knockout punch right away. I would just stay down for sure. I would sell it. I would flop. You might, you're not going to have a choice. No, like I'm saying like the initial jab and like you kind of half parry it. Like that always starts a fight. I'm down. Like that's it. That's enough. So it's, we yeah, we, we touch tough. gloves and I just go flying backwards <laughs> like Marcus Smart and the fight's over. That's how I would handle boxing Admiral Schofield for and the see, record. So it'd be fine and it'd be great content. I don't know. I think people would be kind of disappointed. Can you imagine the buildup to if we like marketed a fight between would you it be and that Admiral good? Schofield? Are you kidding me? We get you fighting a guy in a boxing ring. <laughs> the mar- we'd get so much content out of that time. We're going to film training sessions. We're going to grind some Schofield film to say, hey, how could this translate <laughs> to the boxing ring? Ty, we would milk that cow. Speaking of fighting, uh, do you have James James Johnson on your list? Absolutely. He's the best player on planet. <laughs> Admiral Schofield is British? Sure. He is. He was born in London. Nice. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, Admiral, if you're listening to this, let's let's let's, let's talk. I think you should fight Rohan, Admiral. I don't know. You're the one who <laughs> talked about him. <laughs> um, um, I, okay. Okay. Ty, it's your turn to choose your fighter, fittingly. Yes, and I planned for it. <laughs> so, okay, so picture this. You're sitting at your desk, and <laughs> you offer to, to fight uh, an NBA player. But he counter offers and says, well, I'll give you three options. You can fight me, boxing. You can fight me street fight. Or you can play me one-on-one in front of – and these are all in front of a national audience, but especially the play you one-on-one is. It's Admiral Schofield. Which one are you going to do? Are you going to fight him in the ring, fight him on the street, or play one-on-one with him? Street fight, 100%. <laughs> You're just so confident. 100%. If it's like – first of all, a street fight in a national audience, I don't know how those really – It's 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 um it's uh it's like world starred. I, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. so like so like maybe maybe it's not streamed live, but everybody sees it. Okay. Yeah, uh, I would do I would do the street fight 100 percent for the reasons I just laid out boxing ring. There's sort of like a like it, there's a sport to it. Like you're you're yeah. entering the sanctity of a boxing ring. So guys are going to go out street fight. Like I'll do the, I'll take the same strategy as you. I'll crumple right away. <laughs> like I'll do that. And it won't be a fight. And it's like and the thing is, if it's like a world star style street fight, it's like, oh, you don't know where he hit. It's like, oh, he might have just gotten a liver shot right away. And he, oh, he's down. Versus in actuality, I just like I might have not even gotten punched and I just fell down. So I could do that. Like like it's less it's less easy to hide that in a uh, in a in a boxing ring. And yeah. I'm not playing I'm not playing against him basketball. Are you kidding me? Like, do you know I have I have to stick up for my fellow content creators, my fellow uh, NBA podcasters. That that would get fueled and memed so much. Yeah. Like yeah, like these guys think they know basketball. Right. That sort of thing. I can't. I can't feed into that. I. I would give the world too much. Too much <laughs> leverage against us. I. I think I would have. Basketball second for those reasons. The street fight still. I don't know what it is. I just find the proposition of going up against a clearly superior opponent in a street fight terrifying. Like, it's, if it's a if it's a street fight and I know it's going to happen, like do I know it's going to happen? Let's say you have a general idea, but you don't know the specific time and place. So you're just, okay, that's fine. You're at the that's Oak fine. Creek Mire, and you turn into the pasta aisle, and Admiral Schofield jumps out behind the linguini, and See, he's just ready to throw hands. I can just, I can just wear body armor. Though. <laughs> like, you're just going around tanked up for a month. Yeah, exactly. I'll totally do it as long ready. as it takes. <laughs> for Admiral Schofield to... Yeah, I'll do it as long as it out. takes. But no, I can do that. I can't do. I can't wear body armor in a boxing ring. But you can throw. I think. What do you think I'm gonna do against Admiral but, Schofield? But bro? in in the Meyer pasta aisle, no one is there to call the fight. You just gotta hope Admiral's in a relatively good mood. You think? Like, you, like, hold up, everyone. Google Admiral Schofield right now. Okay. Just look at that dude. Yeah. Bro, what am I gonna do against him? You think I'm, down. look at this dude? I'm not. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> you think I can throw too? Like that's an advantage for me. What is that going to do, Ty? I don't because because when you're boxing and you have been chosen, if anything, to lose, that's just going to make him hit me harder. Uh, well, you, that's not an option for him in the boxing match. The match is over. But like, if I just collapse in, like he's not going to just. He might away. throw you in a different aisle or something. Yeah, but he's not like when I'm down. He's like, let's say it's in the pasta aisle of the Oak Creek Mire. <laughs> yeah, he's not just gonna keep beating up on a guy who's already no, down. I'm saying maybe he, maybe at that point he like picks you up and and like throws you into meats and then leaves something like that. I'd take that. That's not that bad either. Yeah, I'll, I'd take it. I'll put basketball second because it's less chance. Basketball's, a, basketball's you get third to me. I mean, listen, are the memes gonna be bad? Yes, for sure. But if I score one bucket, I'm I'm just gonna package it as a win. I probably don't mind you. But it's an uh, eternal win for me if I score once. That's true. It, it is a high upside. There's more upside. I'm never winning the fight. There's no shot. 
Yeah. We honestly, like, we might have a better chance in a fight than playing him one-on-one. Yeah, I don't think that's true for a lot of NBA players, but for Admiral Schofield, I think. Oh, wait, no. No, no, no. It's more true for most players. Yeah, it's more true for most players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Admiral's just jack. He did. He these, did. These are all professional athletes. Man. In college, he took up boxing along with distance running. That's oh how he turned God. his body around. Yeah, it's not. I found this in the Athletic, 2019. Uh, let me get that writer here. So there is. There's proof he knows how to box. Dana O'Neill. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not stepping in a ring with him. <laughs> I think that might be. Th- I think that might be third now. See, we have the almost the opposite list then. So yours is boxing one? Yeah. And then basketball and then a street fight? Yeah. I just think it's so easy to throw boxing. I mean, would the mob come after me? That's true. Maybe. That's true. But I just think it's so we, easy we wouldn't, to throw. We wouldn't allow any bets on. That's probably good. Actually, anyone betting on Admiral Schofield is not making any money. Yeah, the odds have to be really <laughs> bad. So here's the, here's, here's the upside with boxing. We can convince him to throw. Yeah, 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 that's the upside with boxing is he throws because the odds on me, it must be amazing. It would be like the first pick in the draft when it like just shifted the day of. Imagine the day of the fight. I go from 10,000 to 1 to like the odds on favorite and everyone's like, whoa, Intel's out. We walk and touch gloves. We both go flying backwards. I get up first. I win. It'd have to be an insane bag <laughs> for him to do that. I mean, hey, you know, that's gambling. Gambling money is crazy, dude. Gambling money is crazy. I think I think I'll stick with my original. I'll go street fight, boxing, basketball. Yeah, I will do boxing, basketball, street fight. I don't want to get thrown into some cold cuts. And we should, <laughs> we should it might, clarify. It might not even be at a grocery store. Yeah, you don't know. It's just, you know, we, we laid out the Meyer Pasta. might just walk out of work and just, <laughs> just say Admiral Schofield. <laughs> we, should, we should clarify. No reason to believe Admiral Schofield is not a lovely guy. Absolutely. Not, doesn't not seem a like a violent, vicious guy. He's no. just, just, you know, just jacked. Very, very muscular. Strong physique. Could yeah. be the nicest guy on planet Earth. Yeah, we don't know. He could be mean, too. We don't really know. Hopefully not. But yeah, hopefully not. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. That might be, even though you completely made it up on the spot, that might be one of the most intense debates we've had on a Choose Your <laughs> That's up there. I might never bring one in advance anymore. Just got to keep thinking of it. Yeah. On the spot. I mean, it's, it's good that we were already talking about it. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I got bailed out we, a little bit there. Now that we spent 20 minutes talking about fighting Admiral Schofield. <laughs> Which we don't want to do. But to be, no, to be clear, not. this is not absolutely something we want. Not. No, no, no. The no, opposite no, no. of one. No. No, we are not fighting Admiral Schofield. Please do not fight us. Please do not show up at the Oak Creek Mire uh, <laughs> waiting for me. Uh, uh, I'm not shopping there ever again. Just Imagine we wake up tomorrow to just a notification from at Admiral or whatever Admiral Schofield's ad is. I think He's I would deactivate. I think I would deactivate. He's just tweeting at me? No, 100%. I'm, I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving. <laughs> Unless he's saying he wants to come on the pod, then Admiral come on the pod. Yeah, but what if that's, that's how the, this entire thing got started? What if it's a, a ruse and that's how he finds us to fight us? Oh, uh, it just tracks our IPs. Or just you know, live pod guys, come on down. We walk in; it's a boxing ring. <laughs> hey, if there's cameras, content. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's enough content Schofield talk. That's yes, enough Admiral Admiral uh, talk. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you're still here, thank you for listening to this episode of the Eurostep here on the Eurostep Podcast Network. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you're listening. Make sure you leave a five-star rating on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, subscribe wherever you're listening, whether that's your pod platform, YouTube. Uh, check out gspn.info for all our links, Discord, Substack, uh, YouTube, merch, just whatever, you're, whatever you need. Uh, it's on gspn.info. Uh, pod random, everyone, and we will talk to you next time.